Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to White Fountain Anti-Aging Series with Dr. Richard Chang. Well, today is our first lecture. Dr. Chang is among one of the top anti-aging doctors in the US and China. He has been helping patients all around the world to achieve their peak health. So this platform is built to help everyone who is interested to learn more about anti-aging tips for our daily life. So first, we will invite Dennis Bai, the CEO of White Fountain, to give us a short introduction about White Fountain. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Dennis Bai. Uh, welcome, uh, the, everybody, join uh, today's lecture. Uh, we thank you for spending the time to be with us. And it's great that I can have this opportunity to share with you the messages we are uh, about our work. Uh, I am the interim CEO of White Fountain. We are a startup company focusing in the biotechnology for the uh, uh, discovery, drug discovery uh, for anti-aging medicines and uh, treatment. So uh, our work is uh, to screen um, pool or libraries of uh, chemical compounds as well as the lateral substances and uh, look for the uh, individual uh, either synthesize the chemicals or lateral plant extract, uh, extract like herbs or some of the uh, alternative medicine components. And we try to identify uh, individual components that uh, could uh, potentially uh, increase the lifespan. We use a, a platform based on the microorganism uh, yeast. So first, uh, we study the chemical compounds and, uh, and the lateral substances for the, uh, any potential candidates, candidates, compounds or a lateral substance that, that can make the yeast grow, uh, 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 live longer and be able to uh, give birth to more children in their uh, lifespan. Once we could, uh, we plan to screen through about a half, a close to a half million such uh, compounds in about two years uh, time horizon. Once we could identify a uh, layer down to about a few hundred, and we will move up to the higher uh, organism such as uh, a fly or mice to study further using disease model. We know that the age uh, can potentially cause many, uh, all kinds of disease, uh, cardios, cancers, uh, immune deficiency, uh, and uh, some of the, the lung uh, deficiency. So uh, depending on the chemical nature of the uh, uh, candidates we have identified, uh, we could potentially categorize them into different uh, classes and uh, uh, tailor to a, a individual disease. If, it, if, it, if we found that a particular chemical compound has a, a impact to a gene, a genetic uh, gene, which is uh, related to cancer, then we use a cancer model in mice to study further. Likewise, we could use uh, uh, the cardiovascular disease model for, for the study. Um, so uh, for, for, for year three to five, we plan to finish all the animal studies using mice, using uh, fly, and uh, be ready for human clinical trials. Uh, once uh, 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 the human clinical trial should give a strong scientific data back backing uh, for the final application to uh, um, to human medicine. So that's our uh, business business plan. As I um, just uh, mentioned earlier, that uh, was in a, a startup age we just established this year in San Francisco. And uh, our technology, oh, I should mention that we developed a, um, a innovative uh, technology that's called the high throughput uh, um, drug screening platform using the yeast organism. This technology was developed uh, by professors and his team at the University of California in San Francisco, uh, uh, Dr. Li Hao. Dr. Li Hao is uh, the director of the Anti-Aging Center at the um, University of California in San Francisco. And uh, we also have uh, external members in the pharmaceutical chemistry area uh, who can uh, help us uh, to develop uh, from the yeast discovery all the way to through mice study and uh, to human clinical trial. So we have a uh, we have a team working uh, for the full lifespan of uh, drug development. 
In the same process, because as I just mentioned that they were also going to screen uh, natural substances like herbs, plant extracts, if any components in that category were identified to be effective, increasing lifespan, uh, we would uh, have the opportunity to develop them into dietary uh, supplements because those products have been proved proved to be uh, suitable for human consumption already. So there's uh, there's not ne it's ne not necessary to go through the FDA uh, procedure of uh, toxicity study, human clinical trial. So basically, we can save those steps and uh, um, develop the early stage into dietary supplements. So we are at the study stage and we look for all helps from, uh, from friends, from institutions, from audience in here. If any of you are interested in our uh, work, uh, you are welcome to, uh, uh, to join us in, uh, in, in a variety of, of ways that I think are suitable for both of us. If you're interested in learning about the dietary products, uh, we can provide you about the progress as well as some of the knowledge we have gained in our works. If you're interested in novel drug discovery, uh, we can share with you about our strategy and also the, strat the progress status uh, of, of our work. And if you are a, uh, a doctor or healthcare um, group who is developing your own um, treatment for uh, aging related uh, issues and we can uh, you can you can join us so that we can use our platform to test your products either be a single uh, herb product or a combination of, uh, of of chemical substances we can test your product for the efficacy in our using our model which is uh, could uh, provide the uh, additional value of uh, validation to uh, your uh, the, the, the 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 effectiveness of uh, your uh, products. So we, 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 we so I believe that we have uh, um, many channels for collaboration. So any of you interested, uh, welcome to to talk to us. Uh, I think I'll stop here. Thank you. Back to Jesse. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dennis. That's very exciting. Hopefully, we'll see uh, products soon. Thank yes, uh, Dr. Chang, let's give it Thank to you, you Floor. Yeah, I'm already excited, let me tell you this. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think here we have a perfect combination. I'm gonna share with you from the clinical perspective, you know, how as a clinician in the front line, dealing with clients and people, myself as a patient myself, how to live healthier longer. And I'm gonna share with you what I see, how we can approach and actually like, a, like Diana's Destiny's dimension, I think it's excellent. Well, thank you again for, uh, you know, Ed uh, and Jesse and Dennis for organizing this because I've been long wanting to do this series because it's not just one lecture that you can, it's a totally different uh, uh, school of thoughts compared to the traditional medicine education that I received over the past 40 some years. Well, that tells you how, how young I am <laughs> and, uh, now here, the title will be, you know, this is an eternal dream. It's a healthier, happier, and longer life. Everybody, you need to be healthy if you want to enjoy life. And also healthy and happier, because either one is missing is another life. Only on the basis of being healthy and happier, then a longer life means something. Otherwise, you're just, you know, you're staying bad, uh, you know, in pain. It doesn't mean anything, right? So that's what we want. And that's an eternal dream of the mankind. So how we do, how we try to achieve that? Well, this is about me. And so again, shows how long I am, the, the list of this thing. But I, what I want you to say is that I'm trained in essentially originally as internal medicine. And I've gone through a lot of things. Uh, I've done a PhD. I, I graduated from Shanghai Medical University and spent four years in Shanghai in internal medicine. And then before I went on to become, uh, to get a biochemistry, molecular biology, PhD, and then went on to, uh, back to medical uh, residency in medicine, laboratory medicine, and the National Cancer Institute for a specialty in cancer. I was also in biotech in Boston back when I was in heydays. And so I've done a lot of things, the general practice, emergency medicine, based bench science, all these things. So uh, now I'm also a board certified anti-aging medicine by the A4M. 
Now, let me start with this slide. This is an article on nature in 2016 that shows you evidence for a limited lifespan by a group from Albert Einstein, Jan Weich. Talking about Jan Weich, that brought, brings me back some memory of my old days again. I visited Jan Weich's laboratory in Reichswijk, Netherlands, uh, TNO, which is like uh, Netherlands uh, NIH, uh, equivalent to, to NIH in the United States. And uh, I had a lot of fun at that time, a lot of windmill. It's a nice place. And then later on, 2018, there's another article on, also on nature. There's no limit to longevity. Okay, so now what's right? Do we have a limit or do we not? Well, if we can live forever, then how long can we really live? Here is the record that I just mentioned. This is a Jeanne Calmont, a French woman who died in 1997 at the record age of 122. This is confirmed and generally accepted in the scientific community. Nobody as far as we know, has uh, lived longer than that. Here is a study uh, last year on nature again, showing you the, uh, again, the average as a lower uh, corner here you see is uh, seems to be one of the numbers that has been around and uh, sort of uh, uh, accepted by many scholars is that probably 120, maybe stretch a little bit, 150. That's kind of the, optimal lifespan than one can achieve. Well, they do this by, they arrived at this conclusion through many uh, mechanisms or many, many ways. One of the way is by analyzing, for example, uh, analyzing the, you know, we have the top 10 as, oh, not, not this one. Anyway, every disease, cancer, cardiovascular diseases and diabetes, all these, they, they have these, stat, I mean, uh, epidemiological studies showing each of these diseases, how many years of human life we were cut, cut short. So if you add back these years to human life, then they can arrive also at about 115, 130 in that neighborhood, okay? So that's the number can a lot of people accept. If we don't live, if we do not develop chronic diseases, maybe we are able to live to about 120 years of age. Now this, slide shows you the academically sort of uh, uh, generally accepted hallmarks of aging. We know genomic instability, DNA instability, telomere attrition, I think we're talking about, you know, shortening of a telomere, and also a bunch of others, including, for example, mitochondrial dysfunction, which is, which is I highlighted here for one reason is that actually we can do something about it. Okay, and you know, again, I'm, for, I'm coming from the practical clinical side, what can we do today? And of course, we also need a dream, we need hope from Dennis's group in the laboratory providing future hope to us, right? And also one other thing is about stem cell, stem cell exhaustion, which clinically also we're already using it. We can use it in, in, in many occasions, okay? So anyway, this is the hallmarks. And one of which we showed the mitochondria. Mitochondria really plays a very central role. People have been focusing a lot on the DNA, which is important, the genomics, the genetics, how we are coded to behave, right? However, mitochondria seem to play a very critical role. We, some of us may know, mitochondria is the battery of our cell, is the energy source. But it not only provides energy to, it provides about 90% of the energies our body needs, but also it plays a very critical role, a few critical roles of regulation of cell replication, cell growth and cell death. You know, like, uh, there are a couple of modes of the cell death. Some of them is like a, a, a dramatic a, a accident or bad. Some of them are programmed. We know apoptosis program cell death. That's part of the normal health maintenance. Anyway, so mitochondrial dysfunction actually into, is intertwined with nearly every other hallmark. The concept here actually is that these are all critical components of our aging process, not just any one, it's all of them. That's important. I think that this theme will come repetitively 
over and over again. We shouldn't look at things one at a time. Because why do I mention that? Is because today's doctors, myself included, we've been all trained to look at things in a super simplified mode. Okay, we were trained to have like a one set of symptoms. We arrive at a, a diagnosis, for example, diabetes. Then I give you a diabetes drug. That's the business model, but it doesn't work for chronic diseases, not for acute disease either. I'm gonna show you. Now here is a data from World Bank showing you the average lifespan globally. Today, 2019 is about 72, 7. Uh, 73 years of age. In the United States, it's about 79 years of age, okay? So, like I said, you know, from our optimal life lifespan, lifespan of about 120, we live to globally 72. We only live up to about 60% of our potential. We, that's a lot of improvement, 40%, okay? Even when you expand, you know, so that's the first order of business. How can we, gain back the lost 40%. Now here is a study by, uh, from Medicare back in 2014. They surveyed 1.3 plus million Medicare recipients. All these people were age 67, okay? The figure on the left shows you the correlation between number of chronic diseases and expected life expectancy. Basically, if you were at 67 in the United States and you have zero chronically, I mean, zero uh, clinically diagnosable disease, then your expected life expectancy is another 23, 22 years. You can expect to live about 90 years of age. That is if you have zero. If you have five, I summarize here on the little table here, if you have five chronic conditions, you can expect to live about to 82. It's a short, it's about eight years short, 9%. If you have 10 or more chronic diseases, man, your life is a lot shorter at 72, okay? So this, what that message here is that clearly these chronic diseases are the first roadblock to longevity, okay? This is a table of the top 10 chronic diseases. The top one is heart disease, second number two is a cancer. That cuts short, that kills a lot of people, okay? So clearly the first thing, the first business order is the chronic diseases. And 80% of older people that basically 65 and older have one or more chronic conditions. And it's two thirds, more than two thirds, 68% have two or more. So that is the predominant disease. The, this is the first thing we need to do. Here is my general summary of my understanding of aging and anti-aging medicine. So I kind of class, I mean, I kind of divide anti-aging into sort of two categories. The number one, I call it task number one, or the general sense of anti-aging, or the clinical side, things that we can do today is the prevention and reversal of chronic diseases. Making sense, right? Because these are the diseases that are cutting short of our lifespan. If we don't suffer from these diseases, we may be able to, at least the data show that we can live up to 90%. That's the average. Some people live longer, right? And maybe even longer than that. So that's the first order of business. And that's the routine, mundane, the things we do today, we can do today. Now, the specific anti-aging, in my understanding, a lot of the scientific community, that's what they do is, what I mean by specific is by how we can extend lifespan beyond the biological limit, which is programmed in the DNA, in the telomere, in these other things. So that's what I call, because basically the way to interpret it is that, the, including, for example, DNA instability, uh, telomere attrition, some of it, a lot, most of it probably are genetically programmed, meaning even if you live a perfectly healthy life, those things will still happen because it's programmed. However, today we live in an environment with a lot of the toxins I just mentioned about, a lot of unhealthy lifestyle, and also a lot of stress that is just mentioned, you know, the last three years, the, the, the politics, the pandemic, and the, the other things that really takes a toll on our lifespan. 
So those are the issues. Those are not the in, in both, but those are not the biological limits. The true specific anti-aging is if we can extend those lifespan. And that's more to me on the basic science part. And uh, you know how we can tweak our genome, the DNA genetics to extend beyond. So I think uh, we need both of these. Okay. And of course, we are not separating these, you know, uh, totally clearly. And what I'm saying is that when we are doing this test number one, if we come up with nice nutraceutical molecules that can help tweak our genetic system, we can use that too. So we can combine both. But we need to understand this, this at least this is how I understand aging. So uh, here I want to show you this cartoon. So we can use these nutraceuticals to extend our lifespan to infinity and beyond. Now, like I mentioned earlier before we started, the first thing people jump onto is this is the question I should I got today uh, yesterday when I posted a flyer, and today we got another one is that they skip the prevention treatment of chronic diseases. That's boring. They jump directly to the anti-aging drugs or Marcus, what do you have to offer me? <laughs> okay, this is what I, you know, we know is a quick fix mentality. Okay, of course, when there's a need, there's a market. So the market today is full of these miracle anti-aging pills. Don't worry, if you want to make a, a few quick bucks, that's the way to go. But to me, like again, you know, I'm not against money. I want money, I like money, I love money. Don't get me wrong. However, my first order of business and interesting is I want to see what really works, how I can keep myself healthy and happier. At the same time, make some money, okay? So that we, we need to get to the priority straight. What really works is first, and then see if we can, you know, of course you want to provide a service, sell a decent product, people will pay money, okay? So I'm gonna share with you in this lecture and hopefully in the future lectures, how I, you know, over the past about, more than 10 years, close to 20 years, particularly in the anti-aging field and over all 40 some years in medicine. How, what I have learned, I'll share with you. I'm also from the consumer side of myself. This is what I have been formulating over the past 20 years, uh, probably 15, since I uh, started attending the A4M conference, the Anti-Aging uh, Institute. Basically on the top right, the orange in the center here, is the clinical diseases, diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular diseases. And today, like I mentioned here in the text, current medical model is that focusing on a single, singular druggable targets. Okay, for example, coronary heart disease, they focus on cholesterol, then give you billion dollar market value of cholesterol drugs. Do they work? I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about in this one, but they don't work, I'm telling you. Not only they don't work, they also cut short your lifespan. Diabetes, they focus on sugar, okay? Cancer, they fo focus on mutations. Well, let me talk about mutation a little bit. Everybody knows about cancer, right? Because uh, we all know, we agree, this, there's not much debate right here is that the 10, 90% or more of the cancers are caused by carcinogens. There's no debate here. And the carcinogens cause DNA mutations. So they develop drugs against mutation. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that's reasonable. But have you ever heard any <clears throat> doctors in the clinic talk about what carcinogens may, you may have other than cigarettes maybe? No. So this is the current business model. Um, you know, what I'm saying is as a patient, as a, as a consumer, we need to know these things. I'm not here to spread a conspiracy theory. We just need to know their playbook. So we know what they're trying to do, what their weakness is. Okay, so to me, we all know this is common sense is that these are clinical manifestations. We need to go to the root causes. Everybody knows how to talk. So the, the green two green boxes are the root causes. One is the environmental, basically things that you have little control of. You know, you can't control the uh, environment. However, you can control your own lifespan, your attitude, your exercise, nutrition, these things, right? So basically these root causes, will affect on your body, the number three in the bottom. So going through a series of changes that in your body eventually leading to clinical symptoms. And here you can call them mechanisms or 
the processes. For example, we're talking about mitochondrial dysfunction. Mitochondrial dysfunction is partially a genetically programmed condition probably, but also a lot of these today's uh, uh, diet toxins can, inf uh, can affect your mitochondrial dysfunction. We talk about genetic mutations. Of course, carcinogens cause mutations, which is part of the process then eventually may contribute to cancer development. But today's medicine, we usually don't address too much of this. Definitely we don't address these root causes. So if we understand how these things, then we may be able to uh, target the root causes directly. Now, talking about the disease, we mentioned that the business model today is singular, right? Actually, I cannot, let me put this way conservatively. Most of the diseases are multifactorial, particularly the chronic diseases. It's not caused by one single factor. Heart disease is not caused by just cholesterol. Cholesterol is not a root cause. It is a process. We're not going to talk too much about today. But I want to use COVID-19 because everybody knows about COVID-19 today. A lot of people probably know more than I do. So COVID-19 is an acute disease. And we also have heard mostly from the authorities, government agencies, even international agencies, focusing on the virus. But is COVID-19 the cause, the virus, the SARS-CoV-2, is that a single cause disease? No, it is not. Let me explain to you why. This is straightforward. There's no controversy here. There shouldn't be, at least. First of all, when you catch SARS-CoV-2, most people are asymptomatic or only with mild symptoms. Very few people develop a severe COVID disease or even die, right? So at any particular time and in any particular community, usually it's one of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Of course, it has gone through a couple of mutations. So the question here is that it's the same virus, but why there's a diverse clinical presentations from asymptomatic to death. So clearly, virus is not the only factor determining this disease. So basically, it's a tug of war as shown, uh, represented by this, uh, this cartoon. It's not a single factor disease. What determines the clinical outcome is more of your immunity rather than the virus itself. Okay, so this is basically your immunity or these vitamins, antioxidants versus the virus itself. So this is clear. There's no point. I'm willing to debate it with anybody. Yeah, I usually, let's say Fauci, I'm willing to debate against him. Over the past two and a half years, Jesse may know, I've been talking at various media, TV stage. Anyway, so what I want to show you here is <clears throat> even a acute disease like COVID-19, it is not a single factorial disease. That's the message I want you to remember, particularly coronary diseases. So here is my summary of my approach over the past, uh, combining my 40 some years, particularly last 10, uh, my understanding. Basically here is my approach to health and uh, diseases and anti-aging. And on the left of these two figures, cartoons showing you, basically, I think we should all take an integrated view or holistic view. You know, basically you have to analyze these factors, at least the major factors and in the natural view, because I'm gonna explain a little bit later and balance the view. Don't treat only one side of the thing. You have to look at the whole body. Doctors, you should look at the patient. Don't look at any particular organ or any particular test. You treat the whole patient. So that's what I call the holistic and the balanced or natural. What, what is natural? Here on the lower level here, the figure. So I look at the health as three levels, three different levels. Now, why do I do this is because hopefully that will help us to analyze the complex health and diseases in a little bit more straightforward way. So I look at health as three different levels. The first is anatomy. We all know to be healthy, you got to have a head, two extremities, I mean, four extremities, upper and lower, you have to have a liver, all these things, that's obvious. The second is that these organs and cells and tissues, they have to work together in a, uh, in a coordinated fashion, right? We all know Stephen Hawking, the British uh, 
the physicist who unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago, he had all the anatomic parts as we are, as far as we know, but he, he couldn't move his body. So basically he had a neurological issue. His nerves were not able to coordinate the movements of his body parts, right? So that's what I call why, what, what's important? What do I mean by here, physiolo physiology? I'm talking about the neural health and endocrine hormonal health. This is critical particularly hormonal. This is a, a major part in anti-aging medicine, hormone balance, okay? What do these things do? Hormones interact, coordinate the teamwork between the cells and organs, okay? At the very basic level, the cellular level or the biochemistry level, what I call, is that you need to have the optimal nutrition and the absence or minimal presence of toxins. That's again, common sense. There's no debate here. Is that what is nutrition? All the normal parts that normally we need, we got to have them. Not only that, but also they got to be present in optimal amounts and also probably normal and optimal ratio. What are those optimal? We need to research, but that's the concept. We got to have all the good things in the right amount. At the same time, we shouldn't have, or we should have the minimum amounts of toxins, the things that normally shouldn't be there. For example, heavy metal, lead, mercury, those things have no business in our body, but today they're everywhere. Yes, many of you probably have them. So that's what I call at the biochemistry level. So if we dissect the medicine anti-aging in this way, things are a lot easier to understand. Here is the text that limits, I mean, that describes or, or briefly is that you know, some of it uh, like spiritual, natural sleep and the love, natural getting and, and exercise, right? Diet, nutrition, toxin, hormone balance, regenerative medicine. That's the list I go through. Okay, practically all the uh, therapeutic uh, drugs or agents or measures will more or less fall into one of these categories. But again, out of this list, let me tell you, many of them are highly controversial. My job here is not to, uh, to uh, my job here, let me put it this way, is try to understand what these things are and, uh, come, and to try to understand both sides, the, the, both sides of the coin and uh, arrive at our own conclusion. I will present data and you can arrive at your own conclusion. Of course, I will give you my opinion. For example, let me give you one opinion about uh, the diet. We, of course, very controversial. We all have read about Mediterranean diet, which is good, right? Yes, we agree. Now, Mediterranean diet compared to the standard American diet, it's better. A lot of research papers that show that. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't really know how to read science papers. We got to be careful because science papers will show you, for example, they will show you Mediterranean diet helps improve cardiovascular disease or, or diabetes or whatever. But you have to understand what they're comparing to. If you are comparing, most of these diets are comparing to the so-called sad diet, the basically what I call junk diet, American's junk diet. Of course, Mediterranean diet is better. The question, the real question is, for example, some of you may know it's getting more and more popular, the low carb or ketogenic diet. Now, What's better, Mediterranean versus low carb or keto? Okay, that's another question, right? So in scientific papers, we haven't seen many of those comparisons, but that's something we need to understand. By the same token, you will see in science paper, for example, NMN. We know NMN right now is marketed as kind of like a miracle anti-aging pill, right? It's kind of pricey as well. What is NMN? NMN is a precursor to a important molecule called NAD+, which is involved in more than 50% of our biochemical re reactions in our body. Yes, it's involving everything. Cell growth, your muscle growth, your energy metabolism, a lot of things, okay? Now, there are a couple of precursors. NMN is a new one and it's a more expensive one. Also, another one we everybody knows probably is vitamin B3 or niacin. Okay. This thing has been around, or at least the studies have been around for at least more than 70 years. Okay. So you when you see a paper that talks good things about NMN, the question, my question is, 
compare them to niacin. Is it a better or is it a same? Because there's a huge price difference. Niacin is a lot cheaper. So that's kind of thing I'm going to analyze it because on the side, why? Because yet, generally speaking, more expensive products tend to get more study they because there's more commercial interest in it, right? So we have to understand. Of course, these papers don't really analyze that too. They don't tell you nice and probably does the same thing. Actually, yes. Today I got a paper, somebody sent me a paper about nice and uh, improves the, or, or increases the natural killer cells anti-tumor activity. Actually, back years ago, they have already shown nice and does the same. Why? It's the same mechanism, okay? So those are kind of things I'm here to do because I need to know and I will share with you, okay? So about nutrition, a couple of things here is that nutrition is critical for cell regulation, replication, apoptosis, autophagy, those things, energy, mitochondria, like I mentioned. One of the very important concepts you will hear me talk more and more is oxidative stress. Uh, and today I'm gonna to talk a little bit more while I want to cover the general thing, okay? And hopefully in the future, we'll talk about practical things. Toxin, toxin is very widespread, okay? Toxins are natural existing toxic materials and toxicants are the man-made or synthetic toxins, okay? So environmental and also your own, in your body, like chronic infections, metabolic. So that's another major category. Hormonal balance I just mentioned about, including thyroid hormone, adrenal hormone, sex hormone, growth hormone. Growth hormone, there's a lot of study on anti-aging, okay? So that's another, so here, and the regenerative medicine stem cells include, for example. So the point here is that uh, only if you take a holistic approach to include as many of these measures as possible, then you can optimize your anti-aging protocol, okay? You skip all these things, jump onto the growth hormone, for example, and a lot of Chinese here, I said, you know, I always use this Chinese joke is that you smoke and drink, play mahjong overnight, and you expect to pop a pill, you can live healthy and forever. I'm sorry, you'll be disappointed. It doesn't work that way, okay? So we get to combine both. So this is the list I usually go by, and not only uh, in anti-aging, but also when I approach chronic disease, that's the same thing how I, how I approach. Here is a summary in a graph. In a graph. Uh, so here you have three curves. The black curve is the average lifespan today. Okay, above age 30 or 40, actually we have a lot of diseases like I showed you. Okay, so average lifespan today is about 80 years of age. If you are careful, you pay attention to your diet, your lifestyle, you exercise, all these things, you probably can live to 90, 100 years, okay? And we hope that by anti-aging medicine, and I put in the text right here, also molecular medicine, and nutrition, optimal hormonal balance, and these other things, maybe we can extend our lifespan further by uh, above 10, 110, 115, 120-ish, okay? So that's, very realistic for a lot of people at our age today. And whether we can extend beyond that, well, hopefully Dennis will bring us more uh, hope and in the future. So uh, this is, uh, here is, uh, I will, for the remaining time, I will go through quickly, uh, you know, I don't want to take too much time. Is I will show you with this approach that we have been able to improve and reversal many of the incurable or hard to treat diseases, okay? For example, coronary artery heart disease. Yes, we are able to reverse. Yes, I use a reverse, or you can say cure actually, uh, cardiovascular diseases. We have seen two cases at least. And also in the literature, there are you know, quite a few other cases. We are able to improve and reverse metabolic diseases, including type two diabetes. Weight loss is easy. Okay, we have done a lot. Bone health, including osteoporosis. We have done a lot of all human disease. I think I will have quite a few pictures that I will show you here, okay? Cancer, yes. Emotional disorder we're talking about. Uh, that is what we talk about. Well, I just go quickly here. I'm not gonna go to the detail. This is one uh, uh, coronary artery heart disease. Basically, the patient has coronary heart disease with pain. He, he was symptomatic, okay? And he had to take a nitroglycerin to control the pain. And uh, you, uh, this is Chinese, this is from Chengdu in China. Anyway, he, uh, this was uh, two, two years ago. 
he had a CT angi angiography, basically, you know, angiogram. This is a standard uh, uh, testing test for uh, to confirm diagnosis of heart disease today. He was confirmed to have a coronary artery disease with, with mild stenosis in the proximal end of the LAD, a major coronary artery, and there was a moderate stenosis in the middle portion. 50 to 69, that's the classification, okay? So he came to our service, I went through, uh, this is our auto, also molecular medicine protocol. Basically, the already mentioned about the diet and nutrition and these things. Uh, we're not gonna go to the detail, hopefully in the future we'll do. Eight months later, he had a repeat in the same place and improved, okay? The mild stenosis disappeared. And the moderate stenosis reduced to mild. It's improvement this eight months, okay? 20 months from the start. So which is uh, by about February this year, yeah, a couple of months ago. And all those stenosis are gone, reversed, okay? And also he, yeah, this is it. Yeah, he also sent me a message showing you, showing me that he used to have these symptoms, the chest pain, and now he, I think he said that he can fly, I mean, he can uh, climb the stairs like 11 staircases without any stopping or any issues. So basically, clinically, he also, uh, uh, I mean, became symptom free, okay? And that's the first one. And that's another one, similar age. This is from Changsha, Hunan, 61 years old. He had, uh, again, CT and uh, uh, ultrasound confirmed carotid artery stenosis, okay? And uh, make a long story short, he went through the same thing, I think six months later, I think it was six months later, yes. And uh, the no more abnormality, basically no more plaque formation, no more stenosis of the carotid artery, okay? So these are the two cases of, uh, we have some other cases reported, but I didn't uh, show a picture here, uh, you know, re reversal of uh, atherosclerosis. Yes, these in current uh, medicine, that's not possible. Okay, I mean, if you try to lower cholesterol, it won't happen. We have done a lot of cases in, in autoimmune diseases. This is my first case of actually autoimmune disease quite a few years ago of a psoriasis here in the United States. This is a patient came in for a weight of 300 pounds when he came in, I think 299. Anyway, at the same time he had as on the left side, you can see the psoriasis skin rash in Chinese is new pishuan. He had a, four extremities covered with these rashes, okay? And so anyway, weight loss is easy, you know, uh, but the, you know, what's in, what really caught my attention is about one month later, two to four weeks later in the center, his skin rash improves significantly, okay? And this on the right, uh, the picture is not that clear, but you can see briefly it's all normal now. This is 11, 11 months later, he lost a hundred pounds, he went down to 200 pounds and he, his skin rash were all gone. This is my first time that I start clicking. Oh yes, actually I know it, but I'm not a dermatologist. I'm not a skin doctor. Actually, a lot of skin diseases have start from your gut, from your, from your stomach, okay, from your intestines. And since then I've seen quite a few. This is also a one, I think this is my first Chinese patient back in China many years ago, as showing you you know, all these skin rash on the top panel. And he was so happy later on, you know, very nice skin here. And this is vitiligo, Dai Dian Feng in Chinese. You can see in one year. This actually is a longtime friend of mine. And anyway, you see, you can see the dramatic improvement of the vitiligo, okay? And this is one of my American patients, Caucasian here in the United States. And well, he basically, this is an interesting lady. She, uh, she drove by my clinic on a regular basis because of her work. And uh, anyway, she had a his six months history of skin rash and uh, low grade abdominal pain. And she was to the degree she couldn't function. She went to the dermatologist and GI doctor, did a CT skin biopsy, but uh, it, they couldn't figure out what it is. And one time, you know, they saw my sign and the uh, integrative health center. And I said, well, what the heck, let's just start back to see what they do. One that she came in, actually, I already knew what it was, but I still listened to her. After 10 minutes, I told her, I said, I think I know what it is. So basically, so you can see the rash, how bad it is. 
Why, what is this? Is basically she's having the reaction to the poisons or toxins in her diet, which is a very repetitively very common thing. Skin diseases, autoimmune diseases are on the rise. Why? A major issue is of the environmental toxins that cause our gut to be leaky and to allow a lot of these big molecules, some uh, undigested or even poisons, even bugs, going to our system to cause immune reactions. That's a major reason of a lot of these autoimmune diseases, okay? So basically for this patient, I told her go on the, the I have a strict, very strict diet for this, basically get rid of all these plant-based foods. Anyway, uh, this was two weeks later, I was already in Shenzhen, I went to Shenzhen for a conference to give a lecture. And she was improving. Yes, you can still see the redness, but much improved. This was two months later. I was still in China, completely uh, in, improved. When I came back in September that year, and three months later, her skin was totally normal, and she was very happy. Okay. So this type, of, this is a alopecia, you know, loss of hair, and you see the difference between. And this is a, a lady in 78, I think. Anyway, she had a two, 20 years history of Sjogren's. It's another type of autoimmune disease with skin rash, you can see clearly. And I put her on the diet again. And within, this was with yeah, one year, one month. You can see the significant improvement of the redness and the skin inflammation. Actually, I've seen this repetitively. Actually, the more acute the symptoms are, the easier, the more significant improvement will be. Invariably, I can help them to improve within a month, a couple of weeks usually, okay? I love this type of skin rash, why? Because one picture is worth a thousand words. I don't have to explain a lot, show you a picture, it works. Because these, most of these patients, they have seen a lot of doctors, they couldn't help, okay? Here's ulcerative colitis, you know. Uh, actually, the Japanese prime minister, uh, Abe-san, uh, he had this ulcerative colitis. It's another type of autoimmune disease and this patient improved. He, she used to have like bleeding and all these problems and didn't go on steroids, which is standard therapy. When on our, our, our you know, uh, functional medicine, she, her symptoms significantly improved. And this is my own bone health. You know, at my age, you can see, um, actually this was three years ago, I'm older than that now. So my bone density is better if you extrapolate here, that these are the 20, 30 years of age. I'm better than the majority of people of any age 20, 30, okay, because well, I exercise, I eat healthy, and I take a lot of uh, vitamin supplements. I will talk hopefully in the future more, you know, about these things. And even today, you know, uh, on the badminton court, I oftentimes, you know, jump dive to save, you know, people. Of, oh, are you okay? I said, don't worry, my bones are stronger than yours, probably. Okay, weight loss is simple. This was, you know, I haven't updated, but this is many years ago. Like since then, it's very familiar. Anyway, this lady lost more than about sixty percent of her body weight. In the English uh, system, we use this charting system. Patient can enter their weight and a computer will draw a line. This weight loss is easy. And this is the one of my first Chinese. This is a CEO of a public company. And he wanted my help because he wanted to one the punk. This is when the Pembrey went public and he looked much better. This, I forgot how, I think four months, you know. All right, this is a quick overview. Basically, well, thanks again for the organizing of the series of lectures for to Ed, Dennis, Jessica, and also Cynthia. And uh, so today, you know, what I want to show you is that a lot of these anti-aging, uh, yeah, of course, we have to take a holistic view starting from yourself. Okay, I like I always say, if you start living a healthier life and exercising, eating right, and uh, just doing those things, I think more than half of the health problem will be gone. You will improve it. You, you will appreciate it, okay? And hopefully in the future, uh, we will go uh, one at a time about diet, particularly the controversial ones. You know, things like an exercise that pretty straightforward, probably we don't have to spend a lot of time, but diet, nutrition, toxin, those things, hormones, we need a little bit more. And hopefully we'll also invite some other experts to share with us and uh, as a, on an ongoing basis. Anyway, I'll stop here and to answer any questions that you may have.